NLP technique for depression. Um, for those of you who know me, you know that I'm about to um, sort of like combine NLP with the science of either neuroscience or positive psychology, and today it is positive psychology. And the technique that I'm about to teach you takes only 10 minutes a day, and in its purest form, even without NLP, it's actually proven for people with a mild and moderate depression, in some cases even much heavier depressions, that this actually improved their symptoms in depression um, after only um, six weeks. And um, they excluded in this study people with you know, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and that type of stuff. So <laughs> that's not for that. But I'm going to combine it with NLP for you. And for those of you who know me, I've trained over 2,500 people predominantly uh, and intentionally in small uh, seminars in beautiful locations. I'm on Bali right now, for instance. Um, next weekend I'm in Amsterdam, and then I'm back on Bali again, and then uh, Mexico, Los Angeles. So you get the idea. And the reason why I teach in small immersion seminars are, are kind of like when someone asks, what's the NLP technique for depression? Um, you, you, you can't just, just come with like quick band-aids and general ideas. You, you, you need to really know the deeper nuance of NLP and how it can best be applied, designed with, to create your own patterns. Okay. So an NLP technique for depression, uh, 10, 10 minutes a day, uh, I would recommend it as a writing exercise combined with visualization. Um, that would be the best. Yeah. So the, 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 the assignment is as follows. And no, it's not a gratitude journal. <laughs> um, the science is as follows. Um, the purest form, I will explain first, so not as an NLP technique for depression, but as an, a technique using positive psychology is that the question that you're going to write about for 10 minutes a day at the end of the day, what are three things that went well today and why? All right. So that's the purest assignment. And you need to describe that uh, as clearly as possible and preferably also give it a title. Okay. So you have to give it a title, you're going to write about it. And what you do is you kind of prime the brain just before bedtime for 10 minutes to shift away from the negativity bias and the negativity bias, which is actually to understand the negativity bias for many people is already really helpful in curing depression, by the way. So negativity bias is about our, our brains, not just our genetics, but all of our brain genetically have been wired to focus on the negative and that keeps us safe. So for ancestors that meant that we need to notice the avalanche coming, the dangerous animal, the famine coming. In today's world, we still have that bias inside the brain. So it's not just you and your family. All of us are looking around the world to notice what's negative to keep ourselves safe. So one way of sort of navigating this depression is to kind of like, well, okay, let me remedy some of the things in my life that cause my negativity bias to actually flag more than it should. Anyway, at the end of the day, doing these three things exercise, which is developed by Dr. Martin Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I'll add some links to his books and other information out there. Is that the three things why exercise um, is super effective and easy to do. But how can we NLP this up? How can we use NLP to make things better? Well, I'll give you a few suggestions. So the exercise, the three things exercise, works better if you describe it in detail. So with, from an NLP perspective, you could ask yourself, what specifically, who specifically, and how specifically? What that type of questioning allows you to do is the NLP meta model, which is a great NLP technique, um, is to actually make the unconscious conscious. So you're actually drilling down into the information and, and bringing what are more general thoughts like, I am grateful, or I felt freedom today, or you know, whatever it is, you actually drill into what specifically made you may feel grateful, who specifically, and that 
allows for that more clarity inside the brain. So that's, that's one, asking those questions. Now, what the NLP meta model does is not just to make the unconscious conscious, but when something becomes conscious, we can actually turn it into visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, and gustatory experiences inside our mind. So that means we can create a representation in our mind. So what would happen if, in those 10 minutes a day of the three things and why exercise, you would, you would go into re-experiencing it as seen through your eyes, associated, and see what you would see, hear what you would hear, feel what you would feel, smell and taste what you would in that situation. And you light up the brain again in that, in that space, right? So that's a really great way to enhance that exercise. So that would be step number two. What's the third thing that you could do? Well, you can actually also make that image bigger. You make it, that image brighter. You make the sound, uh, surround sound more intense. You can also locate the feeling inside your body that comes with this, what went well today, and augment that feeling inside the body. You can put your pen down from your journal, close your eyes, and light that up even more, right? And then by changing what we call in NLP the submodalities, the, the brightness of it, the size of it, the intensity of it, uh, the sound of it, the smell, the taste, the feeling, you can actually make the experience even better than it actually was, right? And so those are really simple ways to augment this exercise. Now, what else can you do, you know? And I think the magic really lies in the why, even though we don't like to ask why specifically in NLP. Um, so that would not be an NLP technique for depression to go, why, 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 why do I have a depression? Which is probably what people spend a lot of time on to ruminate on that negativity bias. And, and the negativity bias is I have a depression, right? But you can also savor, which is what this is about, the opposite of rumination is savoring, savoring your day and what went well today. And so even 10 minutes a day is for a lot of people a huge commitment that they already failed to do. But what if you committed to that? Because the science said so. The science says that if you do this for one, more than one week, right? It already makes a difference. If you do this for six weeks, you get to improve your depression beyond pharmacology and cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah, it's proven, right? So if you then use the NLP to light that up even more, you notice that you're more powerful. But the why? So why was this day? Why was this? What, what went well today and why? What would happen if you would write down sort of the key word of that why? The positive intent. So the why could be gratitude. The why could be freedom. The why could be safety. The why could be connection. Those are all values. And they're also in NLP what's called nominalizations, but I will not bore you. With, with that, but <laughs> with linguistic terms, psycholinguistic terms. And, but those words are positive words. And you will see a theme developed, that the why and the one word, that the one word will be sort of like, you don't know who is doing it and how it's being done. It's a value. If you would create a, uh, an, a circle on the floor and you say excellence is gonna live in this floor, what would be in excellence? Right, so words like freedom, confidence, power, empowerment, you know, you get the idea, compassion, empathy, you, you, you wrap that up. And what you'll find is there are certain themes of words that you really like. And what would happen if you started to use those words more in your daily language? When you talk about yourself, when you talk about others, and you start focusing on your day, 
how you can get those words, the representations of those words, more into your life. These words are typically, you don't know who is doing it and how it's being done, but you can sort of like, okay, well, how can I create more freedom in my life? How can I get, create more gratitude in my life? And set that as, as a goal. Right? So you can see how NLP can be used for depression. So that was my NLP technique for depression.